Contrary to what almost every historian has so far said, the ideas that we generally identify with the ideas of Renaissance, uh, the ideas like, for example, secularism, uh, individualism, a limited form of government, uh, the legitimacy of the popular will in deciding the, uh, the rule of the law, for example. All of these things are ideas that are quintessentially modern, that are essentially a, a component of Renaissance. And most historians say these ideas came to Iran as a result of, as a result of the encounter with the West. I have done some reading of some of the 10th, 11th, 12th century uh, texts of Iranian uh, literature and history, uh, works that are generally very well known in Iran, some of them are very well known in the West. And I think if you go back and read those texts carefully, you will see that the embryos of a lot of these ideas that we consider to be Western ideas are in fact being shaped in Iran the 12th century, 11th century, 10th century. Now, this is not a purely academic question. It doesn't have just an scholarly implication. It has, in fact, a lot of immediate political implications. The political implication is that when people who are modernists, people like me, people like Shahnushi Parsipur, people like the other people of the last hundred years in Iran, who have tried to argue for a more modern and more democratic society, they have invariably been labeled by the mullahs, by the conservative religious forces, as uh, people who are talking the language of the West, people who are imitating the West, people who are the Trojan horses of the West. So if we can in fact show that democracy is not a quintessentially uniquely uh, Western phenomenon, but Iranians, before they had an encounter with the West, before there was colonialism, began to have inklings about democracy, then we can stop this nonsense about every time we talk about democracy, the right-wingers, the clergy say, these are the dupes of the West, and these are the uh, Trojan horses of the West. Okay. <laughs>